Hello and welcome to Discover from Business News Wales and I am delighted to be joined by TV presenter Jason Mohammed. Hello Hi, Jason, Hi, how are you doing? Nice to be here, how are you? Nice to be here. Uh, of course we're at Tramshed Tech yeah. uh, and I can see a plethora of students around us uh, who are all wanting to get into the creative industry. Yeah. Um, now you Jason, you were almost giving them the, that helping hand aren't you? Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so the academy, we started in November with Cardiff and Vale College with uh, Yusuf Ibrahim and Katie Ellis, who runs the media course at Cardiff and Vale. And the whole idea was to basically give the students an opportunity to have a go at making stuff. So in November, we did a podcast session, and then this month we're doing radio. So I've set them a challenge. They have to create live radio tomorrow. They're gonna go live at 11 o'clock, 15 to 20 minutes, although some of the programs are gonna be running at 30 because they've done so well in getting so many guests. And they go live and we're streaming it on YouTube as well. I really don't understand how all these students are so calm. that They've I actually know. got to produce a, a radio show by tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so was, was the reason that you wanted to do this because you yourself had similar experiences growing up in the industry? Yeah, absolutely, and I think there, for me, there's not enough opportunity for young people like we've got here, brilliant young people, to actually make stuff and have a go at an industry that you and I know a lot about. And I think when I was younger, it wasn't until I got to university to do my postgrad was the first time I actually had a go at making something on telly and radio, which, and I was 22 at the time. That's so, mad. Yeah. So I suppose, did, did you go into it as just a presenter and then learn all the other skills? No, I started off reporting. You know, for those people who might remember this, watching this, I, I was on Wales Today for the best part of eight years before I moved into sport. Mm -hmm. So I used to read the news and I used to, like yourself, when you were doing all the producing and reporting, I was very much a one-man band. So I would go out for Wales Today for the BBC and I'd produce like 15 minutes of live telly most Mondays and Fridays doing the sport. So when I get to a BBC Sport Network level, mm -hmm. they're like, well, you, you can do it all, can't you? I was like, well, could I be doing it myself? Well, we were just talking uh, just, just off camera there uh, about the fact that um, journalists of the future need to be multi-skilled and they need to have yeah, those do. skills. Yeah. Well, why do you think that is? Well, because the technology is there now. So when I started, it was very much you work with a cameraman. Sometimes you had a sound man, sometimes an electrician as well. You know, I th this, we're going back to 1998 now, though. We're going back a long, long way. Uh, but because the technology has changed and evolved so much, so you can effectively make radio, you can make a podcast, you can make television from your phone. Mm -hmm. So these days, I think presenters, reporters need to be able to shoot, edit, write, cut, produce your own stuff. Because the other thing, which is really interesting as well, is that there's so much more telly now. So when I started... News 24 as it was then, now the news channel had just started. And then it was only half an hour of telly, now it's 24 hours. Yeah. So you need to be able to, you need to be able to talk, but also you need to be able to produce your own stuff as well. And uh, you know, uh, we're of course at Tramshed Tech. Um, Tramshed Tech is a very creative Amazing place. Amazing place. Why was it so important for you to, to come here and yeah, do this? Yeah, it's a great question, fantastic question. I, I've known the guys at Tramshed Tech for a long time. I've been working with them on a number of other different projects as well. but. With Cardiff and Vale, this academy we set up back in November, the intention is I come to the college for one period per academic year, basically. So this year we're doing five weeks between the academic year of September all the way through to May, COVID permitting. So week one was podcast, week two is radio, week three is going to be television. That's when we really crank up the pressure. We're going to get them reading the news and having to go at auto queue and that sort of thing and producing their own content. And so basically, my idea was that well, I want to replicate exactly what's going on in the broadcast world. We've got students here, some have just turned 17, one Tate is 21. So we've got a right age range here, and they're all, as you can hear, it's complete silence at the moment because they're so far ahead in where I thought they'd be. It's just incredible. I mean, some of the plans and the programs they've produced already. And, you know, I've only been working with them for the best part of, what, six days over a period of two weeks? The content they're making at the moment is incredible, and they're all destined for great things if they carry on learning and developing and creating. Well, this next question actually feels a little bit like Panto, considering all the students are here listening to this. Um, so kind of how have they responded to, to the sessions? Just amazing. They've just got on with it, cracked on with it. I've just been amazed by their energy and also their planning, because you know what it's like in television and radio and podcasting to a lesser extent. You've got more time in podcasting, haven't you? You've got time to kind of take that bit out, put that back in trim it down, extend it. Uh, I think in radio, and the big test will be tomorrow, mind. They haven't gone live yet, so we'll see how they get on because we're going to stream it live on YouTube as well. So when that 
when the when the pips hit 11 tomorrow that's when we're going live and hopefully we're not gonna have any gaps either in between mm -hmm. so some are pre-recording theirs some are doing live we've got music sessions as well the the team that uh, Carmen's working on at the moment they've hopefully got a live singer coming in Alicia Scott to do like a live set a bit like Radio 1 Live Lounge that's amazing I only set the challenge yesterday afternoon I just literally I, I that's the one thing that I just can't imagine doing like growing up in the industry myself and and having that experience it would yeah. take you weeks to set things up so the fact that these literally have been around. yeah thrown well, in I've at the deep end yeah. I've helped them with a few contests but that's why I'm here I'm here not just to stand there and go right there's your challenge off you go I'm here to help them out as much as I can but they've done all the hard work in terms of getting them in here but going back to that question about tram shed I've been a long admirer of what they do here and the intention was always to do the course at Cardiff and Ville College but we all genuinely thought well, let's come to Trampshire because there's so many cool things happening here so you're here for example you've got Whisper Cumria here as well there's all the startups so there's a lot happening in Trampshire and I just thought we've got we're very ambitious about what we're going to do with this academy very ambitious and so Trampshire have seen it and gone yeah we'd like to be part of it as well so they invited us here so this is the reason why we've turned this into our our mini studio mini newsroom and it goes without saying that the, the students of Cardiff and the Vale College are they're very talented individuals um why do you want to work with Cardiff and the Vale College because it was my old college can you believe it was my old college great question you've done your research brilliant I it's a great question Great question. So I went to College Land Haveron as it was back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I, I talked about when I was a postgrad at Cardiff University, I did the broadcast journalism course before I started at the BBC. And that was the first time I did a radio production day. However, the first time I did any media was when I was at College Land Haveron mm -hmm. way back in 1992. Wow. Can you believe that? We made wow. a video where, so Panath was twinned with a place called Saint Paul de Leon yeah. in Brittany. And I was doing media studies. I did Welsh, English and media studies. And the tutor at the time sent myself and two other colleagues to France. And we shot a video about the links between the two, mm -hmm. two towns. And we came back, we shot it, we edited it. And it went out and it was played out in front of all the college lecturers. So it's almost like I've gone full circle. So they gave me my opportunity to make my first bit of telly. And now I'm coming back to help, help these students get a foot in the industry. And starting them young as well, because, you know, no one else in the UK is doing what we're doing here at the academy. No one else has an academy like this where the bloke who does the football on a Saturday afternoon is coming in to talk to the students, not only talk to them, but also get them hands on, get them making stuff as well. I find it interesting there that you mentioned the importance of, of the Welsh language as well. And you studied Welsh, English and media. Mm. Um, we're now, I think, growing up in the time where the Welsh language is becoming essential mm. in Wales. Um, yeah. it, w will you be promoting that here? Absolutely. We've got a number of Welsh speakers here. We were on S4C. We're on Heno. So the first bit of uh, TV coverage we had was from S4C Heno for back in November for our podcast session. So they came down. So it's vitally important. I'm passionate about the language anyway. I mean, I learned the language. My children go to Welsh speaking school. We speak more Welsh in the house than we've ever done before. And I broadcast more now in Welsh than I've ever done in English. i uh, just been on Amdraw uh, over Christmas on Espadrec, and I did a documentary about where I grew up, Ely, uh, for S4C back in August. So very important. And I think we've got about four or five Welsh speakers here. So, in fact, one of the programmes here, I can't remember which one it is, one of our live radio programmes, they are doing something incredible. And I didn't tell them this. This came from their own heads. They're doing some of the uh, pieces on their radio show Bilingually as well. Wow. So they put a bit of Welsh content in there as well. Uh, so you're not only making them th die out. You're not even you making them think in English. You're also making them think in Welsh well, as well. I mean, this is the thing, though. We're, you know, we're living in a bilingual society, mm -hmm. and that is a fantastic thing. And if we can get more Welsh, I mean, even on the radio, most mornings I say Borodar before I say good morning. And if there's a guest coming on that I know speaks Welsh, I'll introduce them. I'll say Borodar Shumamind in Welsh before we switch to English as well. Of course. And uh, just finally, Jason, um, how can people find out a little bit more about your academy? All they have to do is go on to the Cardiff and Vale website. There's a full piece there, about it, both in Welsh and English, I should say, about what we've got going on. Get in touch with the college. Uh, all they have to do is email them and speak to Yusuf Ibrahim at the Cardiff and Vale College. And then hopefully we'll see them at the academy next year. Uh, we're hoping to grow it and make it as big as, as, big as it can be. Jason, Dioch, Amaskos. Dion, Ardechog. Good Welsh, Dion.